I hope these skies hold, Rudy. I feel like I could go either way at this point. Move over supermoon Perseid meteor shower. Saturn is at its best this month. That's right, Saturn will be at its biggest for the year and be out all night long. Why? Because on August 14th, Saturn will be at opposition. This means that its position between the Sun and the Earth is just right for viewing and photographing the ringed planet. From our perspective here on Earth, Saturn is now almost directly opposite the Sun. And it gives me the perfect opportunity to photograph it and share it with you all. So please join me for another nerdy night of astrophotography in the backyard because tonight we're going after a planet. Saturn is the second largest planet in the solar system behind big old Jupiter, of course. It's nine times wider than the Earth and it has over 30 moons. And yep, you can see some of them through a telescope. It is by far one of the easiest, most thrilling objects to identify through your telescope. Thanks, of course, to those beautiful rings. Saturn's rings are made up of chunks of ice ranging in size from tiny particles to pieces that are several feet across. To the naked eye, Saturn looks like a bright yellowish star, but even a pair of binoculars will reveal a small disk around it. If you have a small telescope, you'll see the rings even better. A larger telescope like this one will actually show the division in Saturn's rings and even surface details on its cloudy atmosphere. This is the telescope I'll be using to photograph Saturn tonight although the process is more like taking a video. To capture Saturn, I'll use a dedicated astronomy camera that attaches to the back of the telescope in place of an eyepiece that you would use to view the planet. The camera will record a short video of it at high magnification. I practiced doing this the other night, but I didn't feel like the native focal length of this telescope, nearly 3000 millimeters, was enough. So I made a little Amazon order. Haha. -ha. So I ordered this little guy on Amazon yesterday to double the reach. It's called a Barlow lens, and visual astronomers swear by these for up close views of the planets. A dedicated astronomy camera like this is not like a traditional daytime camera, not even close. It has a small CMOS sensor in it that's very sensitive and can record at a high frame rate. This is important because I'll use a specialized software to extract the best frames out of that short video I take. What are the best frames? The ones with the least amount of atmospheric disturbance. It's a hot one tonight, over 40 degrees Celsius with the Humid X. As if getting all the gear together to take a picture of Saturn wasn't enough, you need the right weather conditions for a quality shot. So if there's a lot of moisture and heat in the air, no matter which telescope you use, the planet will look blurry. There are some advanced tools to help you get around this, but I'm just gonna hope for the best with my setup tonight. If you're new to the hobby, this is a computerized equatorial telescope mount that will not only point the telescope at Saturn for me, but it will track it. To ensure that the pointing accuracy of this telescope is correct, I need to do a little star alignment routine. And for this, I am using the eyepiece and I've lined up Arcturus and I'll probably do Deneb next. After that, I'm gonna tell it to go straight to Saturn.
I use a software called Fire Capture to run the camera. This is where I can confirm that I have a sharp focus on the planet Saturn and record a video. I basically just need to adjust the gain and exposure levels to make sure that Saturn is well exposed and it's centered. Because the camera is recording thousands of frames, those video file sizes can add up quick. A typical video will include about 10,000 frames and a file size of two gigs. So make sure you have plenty of room on your machine if you plan on capturing several videos. From there, I analyze the video frames using a tool called Auto Stackert. This helps me select the best frames and stack them into a final image I can edit even further. The settings you use here are up to you. I've been stacking the best 25% of frames and getting decent results. I think it's actually less about the number of frames you stack and more about how good the sky conditions were the night you shot the planet. Here's a live view of the planet Saturn through my telescope right now. Isn't that incredible? 8.8 .8 astronomical units away from Earth, or 1.3 billion kilometers. And there it is, up close. This type of experience has a way of changing you. The scale of our world seems to get a little smaller. Think of what Earth looks like from Saturn. Everyone you've ever known, the history of humankind, sits on that little dot. Hey, Trevor here. Hopefully you enjoy my latest picture of Saturn and that you go after it yourself this summer. My picture was actually pretty average compared to what some others are doing out there. In particular, Matt Smith, or insert astro name here on YouTube. So definitely check out his videos and tutorials if you wanna get better. He's absolutely killing it with planetary astrophotography. Okay, that's it. Oh, one more thing, the reveal music. Was it a little too grimy? Kind of badass though, right?